what have we been talking in the last few fluids, fluids right? Fluids. And so we talked about liquids and gases. We talked about liquids and gases in motion. We talked about liquids and gases when they are at rest. We called it static and we call it dynamic. And we also talked about the resistance due to the presence of fluid. The last thing we need to do is solids. So we will do them today. So solids are whatever liquids and gases are not. So solids are those things that are cannot be moved. So what are solids? First of all, let me give you the types. So I can divide them basically into three types. I can call them isotropic. I can call them anisotropic. And I can call them homogeneous. Okay, what are isotropic? Isotropic are those materials where the properties of the material itself is equal no matter what direction you go in. So you could go X, Y, Z, they all, whatever property you're looking at, density, volume, um, number of molecules, they're all going to remain the same no matter what direction you go into. Okay, so I can define this as identical properties. For example, metals or glass could be examples of isotropic medium. What that means is, suppose I have this these molecules, and they are connected to each other. It doesn't matter the orientation of these molecules. They will be identically apart. They will be consistent throughout. So say if I put a wave through it, it doesn't matter what direction I have that molecule. I could have the slab sitting this way, or I could have the slab sitting that way. It won't matter. The same amount will get transferred. Does that make sense? Okay, so then what is anisotropic? The it's the opposite. It will be directionally dependent. So whatever properties you have, for example, density or volume or whatever, depends on whether you're going along X direction, Y direction, or Z direction. Okay? So in this case, properties change with the direction. So if you were to go along the X axis, your wave might transfer differently than if you were to go along the y-axis or the z-axis, right? It's dependent on what kind of a material you have. Most things are anisotropic. Right? Depends on what direction. Now, homogeneous is hard to explain. Homogeneous also has the same properties in all directions. So then why did we come up with a different name between isotropic and homogeneous? Here's the best definition I can give you. So again, this will have identical properties. But think about it this way. If you have an electric field, what does the electric field look like? Then it becomes smaller as you go away. And then it becomes even tighter and go away. Right? Is that what fields look like? Become smaller. Do you see the arrows becoming smaller? Yes. What does that indicate to you? The electric field is getting weaker. That kind of a field is not isotropic, but it is homogeneous. Get it? If I was to draw a circle here, what do I call it? 
equipotential surface. But if I was to put a wave through it, will it depend on what direction I put the wave through? Will it experience different things as it goes past? Yes? So that is not isotropic. Does that make sense? So it does depend on what direction you go in. Does that make sense? So here's an attempt. It's not perfect, it's not ideal, but that's the best one I can give you. 